Okay. Today, what we're going to work on is identifying parts of polynomial functions from a graph. And so I have opened the notes on my screen, and I also have over here just desmos.com. If you want to just type that into your search bar, go there. That will pull up this screen right here, and we're going to use this to do the graphing. So I'm going to switch back here and just show you guys a couple things on this graph that's already plotted. And so what we're going to talk about today, identifying zeros, intervals increasing, decreasing, intervals of positive and negative, relative maximum and minimum, the y-intercept, all being identified from a graph. So on this graph right here, I just put a couple definitions down here. The only thing we haven't really touched on so far is what a relative maximum and a relative minimum is. So this is a polynomial function, and you can see that this goes up to infinity here. This side of the graph goes down to infinity. So if I go to infinity and negative infinity, I don't have really an absolute maximum or minimum, but we do have what we call a relative maximum or minimum. So you guys can see this little loop in here. So in this part of the domain, what they call a relative maximum is the highest point or the largest value um, in this region of the graph. So it'd be the y coordinate of this point right here. The relative minimum, this little dip right here, um, would be the lowest point on this little region of the graph. So relative maximum and minimum can be seen these little loops here. Just want the y coordinate when you do that. X-intercepts are your zeros where you cross the x-axis. Y-intercept is where you cross the y-axis. So actually here, 0, 0 is a point that's an x-intercept and a y-intercept both. And we're going to get into this for a polynomial function. So let me just scroll down here. And I have a blank graph, and we're just going to sketch this. This is a cubic polynomial with four terms x to the third plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30. So I'm going to come over to Desmos here and try and get a picture of the graph. And we can kind of sketch it on here, but I'm going to have you guys look at the Desmos program because it's pretty good. Um, so we have y equals, and if you guys notice, I'm, I'm just used to the shortcut. You can use this sh shortcut down here. Um, to get a squared, but to get a third power, I'm going to type the letter X, and you want to hit um, shift key and the six key. It'll be a little caret button, a little half triangle. That's how you can get a power. So there's X to the third, and then plus 4X, shift six. I'm going to get a squared, or you can use the key at the bottom, and then minus 11X, minus 30, and let me come over here and I'm going to stretch this graph out a little bit. Now you guys can manipulate your screen, whoops, however you would like to, to see this. Let me pull this to the side so we can get a little bit of a better view of the graph here. And I'm going to scrunch it down. Oh my goodness, sorry. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. So what you can do on Desmos that's really nice um, you can snap points. So I can see a relative maximum right here, and if you click on it, it will go ahead and tell you the point. You see a relative minimum right here, go ahead and click on it, tell you the point. There's your y-intercept right there, and then your x-intercepts here, here, and here, so you can see each one of those. Now, um, I'm just going to cut this picture out real quick from Desmos, just using my little snippet tool, and I'm going to come over here and put it in place of this just real quick so we can reference what's going on whoa, with our zeros and everything. So let me do this real quick. And then we'll talk about this graph here with what they want for these problems. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so for my zeros, what I would write down in here, where do I cross the x-axis? So if you guys go back here and look, I clicked on all those points. And so, whoa. Um, so my zeros here, let's see. Negative 5, 0. We have negative 2, 0. And we also have 3, 0. Your y-intercept is 
down here where I'm crossing the y-axis. So that's zero. Yikes, I got no color, sorry. Zero, negative 30 would be our y-intercept there. Okay, now intervals of increasing and decreasing. So we haven't done this for a while. These are going to switch over at your relative maximum and minimum. So here's my relative maximum. Here's my relative minimum down here. I am increasing from negative infinity until I get to that point right there. So I'm going to put that on my intervals of increasing. So um, now if you guys aren't familiar with this, I'm going to need an infinity symbol. So let me go ahead. I'm going to insert an equation here. And I don't understand. Sorry, I have a little problem with my typing here. Um, so I just want to insert equation, and you guys can just write this down, but I'm going to write negative infinity 2, and this is the x value whenever you're doing intervals of increasing and decreasing, so it's that negative 3.667. Now, the other place I'm increasing, because once I'm at this point, then we're going down, 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 so we would be decreasing there, but right here I switch over and from 1 to positive infinity we are increasing so we've got a couple intervals here 1 comma positive infinity and so that would be where I'm increasing notice we don't have any hard brackets here because we are not increasing or decreasing at these points we're just flat we're not moving so that would be your intervals of increasing now I am decreasing from this point right here on down to this point. So there's just one interval here and I'm going to insert that equation again and that's going to be that negative 3.667 so we're doing x values here to this point right here which is 1. That's the only interval of decreasing for that graph. Now if you're talking about intervals of positive and negative, that is going to switch over at the zeros and that is where the graph has y values that are positive like this little loop here, this little piece here. Negative would be under the x-axis. These are going to change at the zeros. So there's two pieces that are positive. This little piece right here and this little piece right here. So I'm going to write both of those in interval notation. So let me insert in case I have to use an infinity symbol here. Um, so from at negative 5, I'm at 0. So no hard bracket here. From negative 5 to negative 2, all those y values are positive. And we have this other interval right here from 3 to infinity. So insert that equation here. Okay, now negative, we're going to have two pieces. We're going to have this full piece right here, and we're going to have this little loop right here. So go ahead. I'm going to insert an equation. You guys can just write this down. Um, from, this is going from negative infinity to negative 5. So I'm going to write negative infinity to negative 5. And the other loop that is negative right here, this is from negative 2 all the way over to positive 3. So negative 2 to positive 3, all those are negative. Now, if they're going to ask you for your relative maximum or minimum, my relative, sorry, max is going to be this point right here. You want the y coordinate for this. So this is 14. 0.815 and then relative min relative minimum is going to be this point right here and you want the y coordinate of that point which is negative 36 all right so we have all this information from this one graph now i'm going to try one more with you guys it's a little bit different this is going to be quartic and we got a trinomial here so i'm going to come over to desmos and type in that equation so here we have x to the fourth and then minus 2x to the third minus 8x squared. And 
let me come over here and I can kind of expand the window, make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever you prefer. Go through here and click, here's a point, here's Y intercept, here's a zero, here's a zero. If you just click on the point, it'll tell it to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on that point as well. And anything that's going to change positive or negative, make sure you click on that point. It should tell you right what it is. And I'm just going to clip this graph and take it over to my notes here so I can look at it and we'll try to analyze it from here. And do this real quick and I'm going to make the graph so we can see it here. Now, zeros. We're going to write down wherever we cross the x-axis. All right, so... I have negative 2, 0, I have 0, 0, and I also have 4, 0. You guys will see on this graph, there's a bounce right here. You don't go through the x-axis, so this has a multiplicity going on in this problem. So there's only three zeros, but this is a fourth degree polynomial. This one would count as 2 to get your total of 4. The y-intercept here is right at 0, 0, so it's actually an x and a y-intercept here. Now, where am I increasing? Well, you want to trace the graph from left to right. So increasing and decreasing is going to switch over at these maximum and minimum values here that we have. So here I'm decreasing, and then this little part I'm increasing. Then we're decreasing, then this part we're increasing. So um, for intervals of increasing, you're using your x-coordinates, remember. So I'm starting at this negative 1.386 and I'm increasing until I get to the x-coordinate of 0. My other interval for increasing is going to start at this value right here. The x value is 2.886. I'm just coming in so I can get the infinity symbol here. So 2.886 to positive infinity. And those are your intervals of increasing. Now decreasing. Here I'm going down. Here I'm going down. So this is also going to have 2. So I'm going to insert an equation so I can get that infinity symbol. So negative infinity to the x value of that negative 1.386. And the other one is decreasing from 0 to this x value. So oops, from 0 to 2.886. Those are your intervals of decreasing. Now, where is the graph positive and negative? You're positive above the x-axis. Okay, I typed these in real quick. So from negative infinity until I get to negative 2, we're positive. Now, the other piece I'm positive is from right here, which is 4 to infinity. These intervals of positive and negative switch over at the zeros. Now, the negative's a little bit weird, but from negative 2 to 0, you actually have to write that as an interval. I never go positive here, but 0 is not positive or negative. So there's actually two intervals here. You're going from negative 2 to 0. That's all negative y values. And then also from 0 to 4, all those are going to give you negative y values. So those are your two intervals there. Your relative maximum would be this point right here, which would be the y-coordinate of 0. And your relative minimum, there's a point here, but this is lower, so the relative minimum is going to be this point down here, the negative 45.335. And so you can see the graph and all the information about the graph here.